in your presentation you were shown as your, your 3D rendering? Which one what did you have up? Which one you wanted to look at? This one? Well, you can pick whichever one you want. When, when I was looking at them, I was a little surprised and shocked because, I mean, I've seen uh, video games that show better 3Ds than that. And I can't imagine we can't create a better 3D model than that. Because I've seen these things where you can get the feel like you're literally walking down the neighborhood and get the feeling of the massing of a building. Because this doesn't show me anything. So I just, I, I'd like to just add, I mean, we, um, we're fortunate to live in a time in a world where there is access to a lot of technology from a lot of different places. And people have gotten very sophisticated with the representation of real life digitally. Um, those products are extremely expensive. We are sensitive in hearing from the community and, and everyone that they would like to see more detail. And we're trying to find a cost effective way to do that. And so we will do our best, but just uh, wanted to caution that that is... The, a very, very high level of sophistication is beyond our budget. I was running a, a nonprofit about 10 years ago up in Sacramento, uh, CFN, and we had software. I didn't think it was that expensive. And, and it was actually you know, showing smart growth projects throughout California. And I'm assuming it's gotten a lot better than that. That was you know, back in 2000. And, and it wasn't million dollars software. It's not the software that costs money, sir. What's Sorry, this is Neil Payne. It's the human beings that actually have to design every building that's on this. There's an enormous number of, there's a lot of space in downtown. What this model represents is a literal build out of every existing building, unbelievably accurately. Unlike Google Earth, buildings here actually sit precisely on the ground and are precisely the height that they actually are in real life, because that's important when you're analyzing this material. Then, when we go and analyze the scenarios, whether it's 50 feet and this FAR, or 120 feet and that FAR, we're not just putting a blob of stuff on the ground, but actually crafting each of those buildings so that they can meet a set of objectives that at the moment we've tried to establish for ourselves, for, to create the most amount of light and air, the maximum livability, the highest quality of, of arrangement. And that's done on every building, on every site. And that does take time. Okay. That's so, where the big money is. So, guys, I just want to point out it's about 9.30. And I have, I still, in spite of sa saving 19 minutes in the public hearing, I still have all, all right. of this. So, I, I, so just, I need to could, be... No, um, okay, so if we sorry. Could, so my name is Armin Malkonians, and I'm a civil and environmental engineer. Um, I took the challenge to uh, create a 3D model which would show us the downtown on a mass uh, level, not on a detail level. I think that what the community has been asking for is to see a massing of uh, the structures that are proposed in the downtown. They're not asking to see a detailed architectural design. I think that by the time we wait for the planning staff to come up with it, we could probably just walk downtown and see a real live 3D model of what's built. So um, I took uh, two days uh, to create this model, which I put on the web. It's free. Anybody can go on. It's, it's on a f site called Sketchfab. Uh, and you could uh, search Santa Monica and it'll come up. It will allow you to basically zoom in to any point you want and to look at the opportunity sites. In this model, um, I put in the opportunity sites at the proposed heights on a massing level, not on a detailed level. I did not consider setbacks. I did this in two days. Uh, the community does not want to see detailed setbacks would be great and nice, but I think that the planning staff actually has this information currently that they could load up on Sketchfab, which is a free website. It doesn't cost any money to put their current model onto it. And the community could go to any level they want and look at it. No, oh, I went underground. So the biggest thing that I <laughs> the biggest thing that I see here is these opportunity sites on the east side of downtown. Are, are really going to change the character of our town. Um, they're, they're really highly massed. These buildings have um, increased FARs, as we've seen today. Two weeks ago, the FARs were even lower. And the, the FARs somehow increased. I, I don't know how that happened, but we've been talking about the downtown for a long time. The Miramar now 
in this current staff report went from a 2.5 FAR up to a 5.0 FAR. We are going to be giving the Miramar a free piece of property by doubling their allotment on their FAR. That's just ludicrous. Um, now, this is the model. Anybody can go and, and take a look. I wanted to also talk a little bit about some other issues that I heard about today. Number one was uh, Ted, uh, Ted's concern about the, the no plan alternative. Um, and the answer given by staff was that they would look at the existing 84 plan. Uh, I, I believe that case law actually says you have to look at existing conditions for a no plan alternative. So the uh, city attorney may want to uh, look that up. On another issue, um, I wasn't going to present this 3D model because I had presented it at the Planning Commission hearing, but now that we got additional time, I wanted to see it. But what I wanted to also talk about today was what Mary Marlowe had touched upon. <clears throat> to me, what was very interesting, my wow moment, um, was when I kind of put the, the donations that were made in the last campaign with the PAC group Smurf. And there was $495,000 total raised. And out of that, four developers uh, pitched in $100,000 each. And those developers are Heinz, which is in the Bergamot area of rather large site, which the Bergamot plan relies on that development coming in. There's the uh, Miramar site, which was $100,000. There was Century West Properties, who uh, donated four uh, times 25000 through different companies that they own, Michael Serensky and the Fairfield Brothers. Uh, they each donated 25000 and it added to 100 That's four minutes. That's four minutes. Thanks, Armin.